What's up YouTube, Craig Lopez here for Tutorialism and today we're going to be looking at sampling within Cubase as I have this question come in from Eric over on my Patreon. So he's saying one thing I always struggle with for a remix for instance is to get an audio track or a sample of it of the original song in Cubase. There's some tutorials on YouTube but this is very tricky and I don't know if there's an easy way. There is an easy way. Then being able to play and tweak this audio, accelerate, slowing it down or even transpose it. So I'm going to be taking this absolute 80s banger, Self Control by Laura Branigan. Sounds like this. And I'm going to turn it into this. Right, so let's just get into it. First thing we're probably want to, go to do is find out what key the original track is in. So you're going to go over to Google, type in a sheet music for Laura Branigan Self Control, and you can see we have this page here from Note Store. And in the sheet music here, you can see it's given us three sharps. Now, if you're not sure what key that is, just Google Circle of Fifths, which I've done here, and you can see here where we have three sharps. That's either A major or F sharp minor. Now, a lot of the time when you're sampling a track, you're going to start off with the sample. However, in this case, I actually started off with the beat. So the beat sounds like this. And I made this track in D minor, which is, of course, not F sharp minor. So should give me a chance to explain some of the answers to Eric's questions. Okay, so to import a track into Cubase, all you need to do is drag it into the Cubase project. And now we know what key the track is in, we need to find out the BPM of the track. Now Cubase does have a BPM detector. We go to project and tempo detection, we can analyze it. Now what you need to remember when you're using this function is that for any track that was recorded before computers were the hub of recorder studios, the BPMs would fluctuate and that's to do with not only just human timing but also reel to reel slowing down and speeding up, all that kind of thing. So when you use this analyze function it will detect those different variations and it will do weird things to your BPM. So I'm not actually going to use that today and I'm going to do this the old school way. So let's focus in on the audio clip. And I'm going to go to the beginning of the track and just chop off the silence at the beginning here. And when you're doing this, it's always a good idea to have this button clicked in, snap to zero crossing. And this is just going to make sure there's no pops and clicks when you're editing audio by starting halfway through a cycle of a wave. So let's chop off the beginning and zoom right in. And I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard and drag this. And you can see we get a little white line here, which has shown us where the zero crossing of the beginning of this wave is. So let's drag that over to bar one. And I'm going to double click on the clip to bring up the audio editor. And I'm going to make sure I've got musical mode selected. And what I'm doing is just basically looking for the snare drums of this track. So you've got one here and one here and the snare drums are happening on the second and fourth beat which in my track here 1.2 or 1.4 are the second and fourth beats so i'm looking to line these up with the grid here and we can do this by using the bpm in the audio editor so let's start pulling this down And we can see that these snares are getting closer to the beat. See, so I go to 106, it kind of looks all right. Let's go further into the track. But we can see here on beat one, it's coming in a little bit before the grid. So 
Let's move this up a bit. And if I turn on the metronome. Here it's more or less in the right place, but like I say, because this was recorded on a reel to reel, we are going to have to do a little bit of fine tuning as well. Now, to try and reduce my chances of getting flagged for copyright infringement on this video, I'm actually going to transpose this track to the key of my track right now. Now, the original track is in F sharp minor, my track is in D minor, which means I'm going to have to transpose it by four semitones. So, to do that, with the audio clip selected, we can just go up here to transpose. Pull it down by four semitones. And that should be in the same key as our track. And now what I want to do is quantize this track so that every snare lines up exactly with the beat of my DAW. So we can do this quite easily in Cubase 12 by clicking on Time Warp, Stroke Free Warp. And zooming in on the transients of the snares just clicking and dragging them so that they line up exactly with the grid of the track. Now I like to do this by hand and by ear rather than letting Cubase do this automatically as Cubase can get confused by a lot of transients, especially within the context of a full track. You can see we do get these faint lines which shows where the transients are and if we just click and drag them they will snap automatically to the beat as long as you have a snap enabled here. So I'm not going to do this for the full track, only the part of the track that I want to sample, which is the first verse here. So let's have a listen. And if I play that over the top of my track, let's have a listen. Okay, so that works. So what I'm going to do is grab my selection tool and just select the part of the track that I want to sample. Go to audio and go bounce selection. And what that's going to do is render out my warped audio into a new audio file. Now for this particular sample, I only want the vocals. I don't want the rest of the track. Now what we can do in Cubase 12 is go to extensions, which is going to load up our Aura 2 plugins. You see that I have got some blurred out because I am beta testing R2 plugin that is about to be released, but is not yet being announced, I don't think. But what I'm going to do is go to Spectral Layers, as Spectral Layers 1 comes as standard with Cubase 12. And I'm going to go to Layer. Unmix Stems. Now it does seem here that I have the full version of Spectral Layers. I wasn't aware that Steinberg had given me that, so thank you very much Steinberg. But in regular Cubase, I believe it will just say unmixed vocals rather than unmixed stems. So you want to go to unmixed vocals if you don't see unmixed stems. And just click OK. And let's have a listen. Now you can just, of course, leave it like that, but if you just want those vocals in by themselves, you can just grab it, drag it into your project, and then you have the acapella to play about with. Let's put that in the track. And that's how I personally go about sampling tracks within Cubase. Right, so I'm going to leave it there for now. If you made it this far through the video, let me know in the comments below. And if you found this useful, like and subscribe. Now, if you do want to ask your own questions, get in touch with me on my Patreon page. I'd love to have you over there. Big thank you to my Patreons who are already supporting already. But anyway, that's it for now. I've been Craig Lopez. This has been Tutorialism. Now go sample some music. Peace.